My name is Justin Roby. I'm the host of Roby Tech. Roby Tech is a show dedicated to PC building, tech news, tech deals, all that sort of stuff. I'm going to build you a $1,500 PC that will run games at 4K. It'll blow away a 10900K in single threaded performance, and it will basically be a beast of a gaming PC, and it will cost you $1,500. It crushes every next-gen console hands down in gaming. So let's walk through the parts real quick. So for our motherboard, we are using the uh, Gigabyte B550 DS3 AM4. This is a B550 Micro Rake DX. This is a relatively new motherboard. For the case, we're using the Cooler Master MB311 ARGB Airflow. Uh, this actually has, uh, really a big fan of this case. This is gonna be relatively small form factor. This is a lot of power in a little box. For the cooling, we're gonna be using the new Cooler Master. So this is their Hyper 212 Evo V2. Um, they also have the black edition. We're gonna use the V2 version for our RAM because Ryzen loves fast RAM. And this is where we spent quite a bit of money. Um, and this is Rip Jaws 4,000, uh, 16 gigs of 4,000 uh, uh, DDR4 4,000. Uh, in this case, just for the sake of benchmarking, we're gonna throw in um, a Western Digital one terabyte because that's our benchmark one. And then we've also got a uh, Samsung 980 Pro um, one terabyte that actually has all our games on it. This is just for benchmarking purposes. You will not see a massive difference in terms of your performance on this versus the performance that you would get if you use the crucial one terabyte. This is just so we can actually test the games. I didn't want to re reinstall them. So that's why it is what it is. For power supply, because this is a 30, this is a 3070, in this case, you'd only need a 650 watt. In today's build, we're actually gonna use an 850 watt mount power supply because what I'd like to do is say, hey, if you wanted to upgrade this to a 3080 build, um, we can just throw another 16 gigs of RAM in there and a 3080, but you'd need an at least an 850 watt power supply. So in today's build, we're gonna put in 850 watt. And then finally, we're using the new IMD Ryzen 5 5600, six core, 12 thread, 3.7 gigahertz, 10900K killer. 10900K killer. Uh, just walking through this board real quick because we like to do this. This is a B550 motherboard. Up here in the top left is, this is your uh, EPS power connector. Um, this is your CPU fan header right here, which is where we're gonna plug in um, for our air cooler. So that's what we're gonna be using there. This right here is your, your 24 pin uh, uh, motherboard power. So that's what that is. These are your RAM slots. You've got four of them, they're dual channel. Down here in the bottom right, these are our SATA connectors. This is another system fan. This right here is your front panel connector. This is USB 3.2. This is USB, front USB connector. TPM, um, if you want, if you care about like for security purposes and wanted to stick in a TPM chip for like things like bit locking, that what that's for. And then your front audio is right here. For IO, um, specifically for a board that's as inexpensive as this, there's not gonna be a ton of options, but the one that we care about right now is this white one right here that allows us to actually flash our BIOS. For now, we're gonna start with our CPU. And the CPU we're throwing in here is the Ryzen 5 5600 six core 12 thread. Uh, this is a brand new CPU uh, just released today. So we've got that installed. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our RAM. Uh, the, what you're gonna do here is you're basically gonna pop up these two things. You're gonna look for this little slot in the PCB, line that up like so. You get a nice satisfying click. There you go. There you go, that is ready to go. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install our M.2 drives. You're gonna see a little slot in here, which is, a, uh, which is uh, for the PCB. I'm just gonna slip that in just like this. And because only the top slot is PCIe Gen 4, we're gonna stick this in the top slot in this case. Put that crucial one right there if you're following along, but because we're doing a little bit of a modification to bench test this, we're, uh, we're throwing something that already has games on, etc. Let's grab our cooler, which is our Hyper 212 Black. And these are pretty inexpensive, but very effective. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove, so we're gonna remove these. Put this out of the way, you're gonna stick this in like that. I'm just gonna pop this over it. So don't be afraid. There it goes. And Sarah, there it is. And then it's just gonna, you're gonna rinse and repeat for the other four. See these little things right here? They can click back and forth. This is the position you want to have them in right there. You're gonna grab these standoffs and you're gonna screw them on each of these posts. Okay, so there you go, that's all set up. And then these are what are gonna go onto the brackets like this. So they're gonna go like that. Just like that, you're gonna screw these down on each one of these. We're gonna put in our thermal paste. 
And the first thing we're gonna do is remember to peel the sticker. That has happened so many times with so many of us. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use these little clips here on the side to undo our fan. It just pops right off, that's nice. Stick that on there, and then we're gonna screw it down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, which is our CPU fan, we're gonna plug that in right there, and then we're just gonna clip this. That is ready to go. And now we can move this stuff out of the way and strip our case real quick. Just so you guys know, if you are doing this, these, these do not come out. Um, these are not, these, once you take them out, they're permanent. I'm gonna line this up real quick and see which slots I need to take out. Okay, so what I do is I look, see how I see this one thing right here? I'm gonna look at that and where that lines up on these slots. And these are the two that I need to take out. So don't take out the top one because there's nothing up here that the, the GPU is gonna have to cover. So you only need to take out the second and the third one. So I'm gonna do that. It's easier to do it with the motherboard out than it is to do it in. So I'm gonna pop these two out because these permanently come out. And these are the ones I need to take out for the GPU. Just gonna pop this in like that. Put a fan in the back here. So that's all set up. Fan is in. Now what we can do is turn this over and put in all our front panel connectors, which should be pretty fast. Let's zoom in and show you what we've done. So first thing we did is we plugged in, this is our fans. This is our little fan splitter. We showed that in the back. That's for the fans that are in the front. Next to that is our front panel connector, which we have right here. So pretty straightforward there. Next to that is USB 3.2. It's like a big cable. It's pretty easy to see. And it's got like a little nibble on it. So that's what that goes there. This is your uh, RGB. And then next to that is your HD audio. So that's all the, head, the, all the front panel connectors all connected and ready to go. Okay, now we're gonna grab our Gigabyte RTX 3070. There it is right there. That is actually, this is gonna look really good in this case. And look at this, we're gonna, we're gonna throw a little pink and black action at this. Let's grab our PSU. They only go in one way, by the way. So uh, for this one, uh, ATX is gonna go in the top. It's labeled that way. This one is a four pin like that. And then lastly, we're gonna take this one the one that you wanna plug into the PSU, most of the time they're labeled actually, it says PSU on it. Um, and then the CPU, the one that is split is the one that you don't wanna plug into the power supply. Just plug it in just like that. There you go, just like that. Okay, power supply is installed and screwed in. Let's plug this one into this one right over here. Okay, there it is. It's gonna go in just like that. There you go. Now. All of our stuff is ready. Build is done. The power is going to come on, but it's not going to boot. So what we need to do is we need to go to the Gigabyte website real quick. I'm going to go to support. We just got to find the ES3H. There it is, revision. Okay, there we go. So we're going to go to BIOS and we're going to download the latest BIOS from October 29th. It was specifically called B55MDS3H.11E. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna copy that to the root of your flash drive, and you're gonna rename it to gigabyte.bin, capital G-I-G-A-B-Y-T-E dot bin. And then once you do that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna unplug your USB, and you're gonna have it on hand. Now, when you plug it in, that's the one you wanna plug it into, this white one right here. So you wanna take your flash drive, you're gonna plug it in just like this, 
and you're gonna leave it like that. You're going to plug in, you're gonna leave it off. You're gonna have it on one like this, but you're gonna leave it off. Now see how this is already powered and ready to go? In the bottom corner is a little button and you just gotta push that little button and that will activate our flash. See that flashing? That means it's actually doing its bit. That little thing. So we're gonna wait for that to get done. There it is. We are now flashed, ready to go, and uh, it has posted. The PC has just posted. This is now 1440p. We're gonna check our advanced resolution again. 2560 by 1440, um, full screen. This is the LG 4K HDR, you can see that. Um, we're making sure everything is set to high. We kept particle quality low. We're keeping everything else the same, and there is no, we are not turning on ray tracing right now, okay? So there we go, that's where we're at. Okay, so we're gonna do Battle Royale. Oh, no, 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 back. Yes, we're gonna do Battle Royale solos. Okay, so we're seeing 160, 158 frames per second right now. Whoa, shoot, I'm already getting shot. Oh, God. I'm tracked. That sucks. Oh, there's a guy. Oh, he had more. Oh, well. He looked good though. I shot him, I hit him. I'm so amazing. Okay, so there is Call of Duty 1440p, uh, 100 frames, you know, you're getting 130 on average, 140. So there you go. Let's, let's check out a different game. So this is a 4K at Ultra um, with, um, well, like with max settings in terms of general, what you want to get here is just greater than 30 um, for flight sim, um, which is pretty ideal. So this is what you, about what you want to get on flight sim at 4K is you're hitting at 30, 36. And you're getting just that little bit of kick from the 5600X here, which just makes it that much better at 4K. Again, ideal for a game like this at 4K is, um, ideal for a game like this at 4K is definitely a 3080. But again, you're looking at resolution and speed and stuff like that. And it, it, it does very, very well, um, given what we're seeing here. Let's go to You guys just saw me land. <laughs> I just did that. So there you go. You guys have seen. You guys have seen the game. That's how that runs at at uh, at. Uh, don't quit your day job. Thanks. Um, I want to say thank you for sticking with me and for being a part of this and helping me learn and do this together. Everything from flashing the BIOS and everything like that, that has been incredible. I wanna say thank you for the kind words and the kind of support that we have in this community. There is no better community. I will tell you that right now. We have something awesome and you guys are a massive part of it. Outside of that guys, have a great night.